Hi, and welcome to Anne's Family Recipe. Today I'm making strawberry rhubarb pie. If you've ever been considering trying your hand and making a strawberry rhubarb pie, now is the time. Rhubarb has a very short-lived season. You're only gonna find it in most grocery stores right around this time of year, like late spring, early summer. I didn't see it at my grocery store last week. Suddenly it was there this week and it's probably gonna be gone in the next couple of weeks. So I bought a ton and I used half for this pie and then the other half I washed and dried, chopped up and then popped in my freezer to save for another pie in the future. Now this strawberry rhubarb pie is my husband's request. It's one of his absolute favorite desserts that I make. It has a really nice sweet and pretty tart flavor with an incredible crust. It's my mother-in-law's tried and true pie crust and you are going to love it. For the pie crust, I'm starting with two sticks of cold, unsalted butter, and to that I'm adding half a cup of coconut oil. Then I'm gonna mix this all together with my pastry blender. You can also just use a wooden spoon or maybe a couple of forks to start incorporating the butter into the coconut oil. But whatever you do, do not use your fingers to scrape the mixture off of your pastry cutter. I learned this the hard way. They are very, very sharp. So use a fork to help you out. Next, I'm adding a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar, which helps with the flakiness. And I'm also adding a teaspoon of vanilla extract, which gives great flavor to the crust. For a little sweetness, I added one tablespoon of regular white sugar. Lastly, I added a quarter teaspoon of salt and then mixed this all together. The last two ingredients for my pie crust are ice water and all-purpose flour. So I'm starting with a tablespoon of ice water and half a cup of all-purpose flour. And I'm going to alternate this until I've used three tablespoons of ice water and two cups of all-purpose flour. And then I'm going to see what the consistency is of my dough and add an additional half cup of flour as needed. In the end, you want it to feel nice and soft like Play-Doh. It shouldn't be too crumbly, maybe a couple of little loose crumbs at the bottom of the bowl, but otherwise it should all come together nicely and not be sticky, just soft. At the very end of this process, I like to switch over from my pastry cutter to my hands just to help bring the dough all together. At this point, I wasn't ready to make my pie yet and the dough had gotten a little bit soft just from the warmth of my hands. So I divided the dough in half and formed each small ball of dough into kind of a flat disc and then wrapped it in saran wrap. So this means you can make your pie crust ahead of time, pop it in the fridge to firm up, or even wrap it maybe in an extra layer of saran and then tuck it into a freezer safe Ziploc bag and you can freeze these for future use. For the glorious filling, I started with a pound of beautiful strawberries and I used about five stalks of fresh rhubarb. Now, you don't want to eat the leaves of your rhubarb stalks, those can be poisonous, but in my grocery store, they came just as you see here. They kind of look like pink celery stalks 
and you can find them in the bulk section of your produce department. I washed and dried my strawberries and rhubarb and then I hold and chopped up my strawberries and you don't want to make them too small because then they'll just disintegrate into the pie. So I ended up kind of quartering them into large chunks. Then I sliced up my rhubarb, which you can actually eat raw. It kind of tastes like a very sour apple. Now, as you know, my husband and I do not like celery. And even though this looks like celery, the texture is not the same. And this lends a nice tart balance to the sweet berries in your pie. Next, I'm adding a third a cup of all-purpose flour and this will thicken up all the juices of our fruit. I'm also adding just a pinch of salt, and then to sweeten it up, I'm using half a cup of white sugar and a quarter cup of brown sugar. You can sweeten this pie to taste. If your strawberries are very, very sweet, you could decrease the amount of sugar you use, or if your strawberries are a little bit sour, you could use up to a cup of sugar. It's sort of up to your taste buds. So maybe try a bite of your strawberry before you mix your pie filling together just to see. I also added in a quarter teaspoon of ground cinnamon. This is optional, but I love that warm combination of cinnamon with strawberries. So this is kind of a go-to addition whenever I'm baking something with fresh strawberries. So now I'm returning back to my pie crust. I floured my work surface and my rolling pin, and I grabbed my pie crust out of the fridge, unwrapped it, and rolled it out. Now, I think I used a 10 inch pie plate, so you should roll your pie dough out into a pretty circular shape that's at least, I would say, about an inch wider than the circumference of your pie plate because you wanna have a little bit of extra dough to work with to form the edge of your pie crust. Now, luckily, this dough is very forgiving because I am not very good at rolling it out, but I could use my fingers to kind of pinch any of those little cracks you see along the sides together. It came back together very easily and I was able to make a pretty nice shape. One little trick I have to share with you to transfer your pie dough into your pie plate is to roll it up onto your rolling pin and then kind of unfurl it into your pie dish. You have to be very careful, make sure you have enough flour on your rolling pin and on the surface of your pie crust, but you want to evenly rest it inside your pan and it should work pretty seamlessly. It is completely up to you how you want to design your pie crust. I just took the excess dough and pinched it underneath. Next, I added in my beautiful ruby red pie filling. I approached the top crust the exact same way as the bottom crust, rolling it out to be a little bit wider than my pie dish, and then carefully transferring it over top. This one, I did not place quite as evenly over top, so I had a little extra crust on one side, which I did cut off. Once my dough had been transferred, I tucked any excess underneath again, just like I did with the bottom layer. And then I just used my knife to cut four simple vent holes in the top to let out any excess steam. Lastly, I used my pointer finger and my thumb on my right hand, and then my pointer finger on my left hand to crimp the pie crust all the way around. So I would pinch it and then press in with my pointer finger. Pinch and press. It's really not that hard and it looks very pretty. I whisked together one egg white and about a tablespoon of heavy cream to brush all over the surface of the pie. And then I sprinkled that with some granulated sugar. Now I hadn't made this recipe in quite some time and my notes said to cover the crust with foil for the first half of the baking time and then remove it. And that's just to prevent the crust from getting too brown or burning. However, I would recommend baking the pie for the first half of the cooking time and then adding a foil covering around the perimeter if you think you need it. Because unfortunately, the foil stuck to the nice crimping that I had just done and kind of ruined it. So I think the pie still looked very appealing in the end, but it kind of lost those nice distinct crimps that I made around the edges. So this pie bakes at 375 degrees for about 50 minutes total. When it's finished, your crust will be a beautiful golden brown color. I 
I did allow my pie to cool slightly before cutting into it because otherwise everything's just gonna fall apart. But you can see the crust was very flaky, the filling was really juicy and just so, so delicious. And I highly recommend serving this pie with a big scoop of vanilla ice cream and or fresh whipped cream. It is so, so good. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram at Anne's Family Recipe, and give this video a thumbs up if you like today's strawberry rhubarb pie. Thank you so much for joining me here in my kitchen, and I'll see you again soon with another family recipe.